When I re returned home to Annapolis, Maryland, after serving in the Navy during the Vietnam War, I was angry, I was disillusioned, and I didn't care about anything. I just wanted to be a hippie and have some fun. But there were bills to pay, so I took a job working at the Evening Capital newspaper doing a column called Action Line, where I tried to help people who thought that they had been swindled by local or out-of-town businesses, usually home improvement rip-offs or warranty scams. Now, I always tried to do the best I could to work out the dispute, but I never got emotionally involved until one cold winter day when I got a, a letter from a little girl named Angela who had gotten a pair of figure skates for Christmas and the blades were loose. So her father sent them back to the store, store sent them back to the factory. When it came back from the factory, the blades were still loose. So I called the factory in Queens, New York, and I identified myself as a reporter for the Evening Capital newspaper in Annapolis, Maryland. And I asked to speak to somebody in charge. I got Frankie. He was the factory boss. He was straight out of the Sopranos. <laughs> he was rude and belligerent. He had the classic mobster voice. He obviously thought Queens, New York <laughs> was the center of the universe. And I was imagining a big burly Guido with like a little stubby cigar sticking out of the side of his face. So I told Frankie about Angela and her skates and how they'd been sent back to the factory and he just cuts me off. And he's like, now you listen to me. I'm a very important man. I run a very big factory here in New York and I don't give a rat's ass about some little girl from, where'd you say you're from? Annapleburg? I got no time for this crap. And he slams the phone down. Well, I'm like trying to figure out what just happened and I'm getting pissed off because I'm like, okay, first of all, factory's not gonna fix these skates. Second of all, some arrogant prick with a New York accent just pissed in my face. Even worse, some arrogant prick from God give me strength, Queens, New York, just pissed on my hometown of Annapolis, Maryland, one of the most beautiful colonial cities in America. So now it was personal. And I was gonna teach this tough guy from New York a real geography lesson that he would never forget. But you need to understand, I have no power. I work for a small town newspaper. I mean, I can't threaten this guy with anything. And for all I know, Frankie's purebred mafia. He may kill me, but I didn't care because I was on the side of the angels. But I knew I had to be creative. So I went down to the Maryland Law Library, which happened to be in Annapolis because it's the state capital. After some research, I discovered that the factory was in violation of the Interstate Commerce Act because they were required to install a small plate on the bottom of the skates identifying where they had been assembled. I had seen the skates. There was no plate. Bingo! I had them. So I immediately, of course, called the New York Attorney General's office. <clears throat> and I asked to speak to somebody in their consumer division. Now, I got the head secretary. Her name was Lois. She was an older woman. And I had learned very early on that secretaries held the power in most offices. They were the gatekeepers. They could block your path, they could let you in, or more importantly, connect you to the right person. So I told Lois about poor little Angela and her skates and the nasty factory owner. And then I said, I'd like to speak to a female attorney. And Lois was like, why do you want a female attorney? And I said, because women are smarter than men. And they're just starting to land jobs in high-powered offices like yours. But I'm betting they only get the cases that the men don't want. And that's perfect for me, because that means I'm going to get a smart lady 
who's got plenty of time to dedicate to this case and is going to do a great job for Angela. <clears throat> the next thing I know, I'm talking to Mary O'Brien, a recent hire, and I tell her my sad story, and she's very sympathetic, but at the end she goes, Mr. Carr, I'm sorry. She goes, this is a consumer fraud case. Uh, we don't have jurisdiction. And I go, well, actually you do. And I tell her about the obscure part of the Interstate Commerce Act. Her interest perks up right away. She goes, send me all your paperwork and get in touch with me in about a week. So I call her back, and she's been very busy. She has assembled a crack team of federal, state, and local regulators and inspectors. <laughs> and they have all gotten together, and one day they pay a visit to the factory. So the Attorney General's office cites them for violating the Interstate Commerce Act. The IRS goes through their books. The New York Consumer Affairs Office cites them for consumer fraud. The New York building inspector for Queens finds multiple safety violations in the building. And the Queens health inspector <laughs> notices that the people serving food in the factory cafeteria are not wearing hair nets. <laughs> So they shut the factory down for a couple days so they can fix all the violations. And Mary says, the factory manager promised to send a brand new pair of skates right away to Angela. And I thank Mary and I say, you know, you've done a great job and she thanks me. She's like, man, this is the most fun I've had since becoming a lawyer. Next day, Angela and her father show up and over at the newspaper office. And Angela runs in and she's got her new skates and she's like, Mr. Gar, Mr. Gar, look at my new skates. And she runs up and throws her arms around me and gives me a big hug and goes, you're my hero. The next day I made my final call to my old buddy Frankie. <laughs> Please tell him it's Steve Carr from the Evening Capital newspaper. Frankie comes on right away. You, you motherfucker. <laughs> you have any idea how much fucking trouble you caused me? You have any idea how much fucking money you cost me? You fucking asshole. I wait for him to finish and then I go, hey Frankie, I just called to tell you one thing. It's Annapolis. Not an apple bird. <laughs> and I slammed the phone down with a big smile on my face because you know what? It felt really, really good after so long to finally care about something again. Oh.